Hey everybody, hello again. We are in John chapter 15 uh, today and uh, hope you're doing well. It's super close to Christmas, so I hope you guys are ready for Christmas and and uh, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying your time off from school. Uh, assuming you are off, off from school this week, I, I assume you are. Uh, it's nice out this morning, I can tell you that. Well, hey, in John chapter 15, Jesus, uh, he starts off by talking about uh, that he is the vine and we are the branches. Anybody know that song? Uh, there's a song, we are the vine, or he is the vine, we are the branches. Anyway, um, if I can find it, I'll link it in the comments or in the details so that you can see it. Uh, but I preached a sermon on this not that long ago. Uh, the link for that is in this video, so you can check that out if you missed it. It's when I was talking about how we need to abide in Jesus if we want to live in his joy and how important that is. Um, so make sure you, you watch that if you haven't. You know, I personally think it was pretty good. But hey, anyway, what I want to point out and what really stuck out to me this time in John chapter 15 was the second part of this chapter where Jesus first starts off by emphasizing how important it is for the disciples that they love one another. He says, This commandment that, I, that I, I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Jesus obviously has illustrated that for us and demonstrated that and modeled that as he went to the cross to die for us, right? There's no greater love than that for him to lay down his life for us. And I find it interesting that Jesus would tell that to the disciples. Every one of the disciples, mind you, would die for the sake of Christ. But Jesus is telling them, you also need to lay down your life for one another. You need to love each other. You need to be there for each other. And you need to, you need to support one another. And he emphasizes that. And then right after he gets done talking about that, he says, this command I give you, again in verse 17, he's, he's reminding him. And when Jesus says things multiple times, it's something we need to pay attention to, right? So he says it again. Uh, this is the command I give you, that you should love one another. But then he goes on in the rest of the chapter, and he talks about the very next line is, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. And then he says, but I chose you out of the world. I've chosen you out of the world, but the world's not going to like it. And, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, uh, it's not all that easy living for Jesus. It's not all that easy standing out from the rest and being different, uh, which if you're a follower of Christ, you're going to stand out and you're going to be different because you're not going to make the same choices that everybody else is always making. And, you know, you'll just behave differently. Love looks different than what the world wants us to be engaged in. It, it honestly does. Um, I remember when I was in high school and I was... I mean, I was a, a Christian, I was a follower of Christ, and, and accepted Jesus when I was 13, and um, so I made some different choices than my friends, um, but there were definitely times and, and moments when, you know what, I didn't want to make the Christian choice or be Christ-like in that moment, so I went along with my friends and, and did what my friends were doing, and, and, and you know, um, there were consequences to that, obviously, uh, you know, spent some time grounded, got in trouble. Um, anyway, don't need to get into all that, <laughs> but what really stood out to me is that when I felt called into ministry, how much I rebelled against that because that wasn't, you know, you know, at the job fairs and, and at career days and everything else in high school, you know, it wasn't, that wasn't cool to be like, Hey, I feel called to ministry. So I'm going to go be a pastor. I mean, that was weird. Um, I mean, I told people that. People knew that. There was a time where I even missed a basketball game so I could go preach. Um, I had a couple teachers that would ask me to fill in for their churches when their pastor was gone. So, like, I, I had that, but it was like I was trying to live in both worlds. I, I don't know if you can relate to that or not, but I was trying to be who I knew God wanted me to be while at the same time trying to be who I thought my friends wanted me to be. And... It got confusing and it got weird and, and you know I rebelled against the call that God placed on my life for a while. Uh, so it's it's not always easy. Um, it was actually an atheist that convinced me I needed to follow God. She was a she worked with me and and one day she actually said if you if you believe there's a God and you believe that He's calling you to be a pastor why aren't you? 
Uh, so that was a that was a come to Jesus moment for me. And I know you'll have those. You're you're going to have your struggles. You're going to go back and forth. You're going to try to live in both worlds. Um, but I don't think it's good, and I think that actually makes life harder, makes life more confusing. And and my prayer and my hope for all of you is that you'll choose Jesus, and that you'll live for Him, and you'll be fully sold out to Him. But what I think Jesus is getting at in this is He realizes that it's not easy for us to live for Him in this world. It's not easy. We can't certainly can't do it by ourselves. We need a community of people around us. And that's what he was trying to tell his disciples. You're that community for each other. You're that support for one another. You're the ones that need to love one another and and die for each other if you have to. Because when you know that you're trying to live this life with other people, it makes it a little bit easier. So, man, guys, know that you're not in this by yourself. You have a whole community of people. Uh, your parents, yes, are a part of that community. I am a part of that community. But your friends and each other that are fellow followers of Christ are a part of that community. And I want to encourage you to stick together. Love one another. Be willing to die for one another so that we can serve Christ. Because He chose us. He chose you to die for because He loves us that much. So let's make sure we love each other so that we can live the way that Jesus wants us to live. Well, God bless you guys. Talk to you here uh, tomorrow, uh, John 16. See you later.